You guys asked for it. Parametric Furniture won the contest that we posted a little while ago. This one's gonna be fun to keep track of because there's a lot of pieces. I mean, a lot of pieces. Let's figure out how we got here. So a little bit of background about why we chose Parametric for the contest. The rest of the office is getting kind of an overhaul in the production area, and we thought it was time to get rid of this dingy, worn out, cushion flipped old couch with something a little more funky in our space. With the timing of the 4x8 release, the new 2.2 kilowatt spindle, and the new bigger, beefier bits, this is the perfect project to show off what the 4x8 can handle. Big sheet goods without any issues. Let's get parametricing. It's not a word, but you get the idea. Part of what has me excited about this project is that there is no right or wrong answer to the actual design itself. It's an abstract shape, so as long as I like it, we're good to go. We've got a lot of space in our lunch area, so I think this thing is going to be pretty big. I'm talking 10 feet long, all said and done. It's gonna use a lot of plywood, but that's okay, because we've got the space. For material, I'm going to use the material that is easiest to use for a project like this. By easiest, I mean large format and accessible. Uh, so I'm gonna use three quarter inch plywood. We all know how I feel about plywood, so I'll get over that. But large format, easily accessible, because I'm gonna need a whole lot of it. And the last challenge is how we're going to finish this. Are we gonna put a clear coat on it? Are we gonna stain it? This thing's gonna be 10 feet long, and there's gonna be all kinds of slats. I haven't 100% tested, so let's see how that goes to. Now it's time to create my design, and I'm pretty excited about this because I get to be a little extra artsy here. The rundown is I'm gonna create my weird funky shape in 3ds Max. Then I'm going to create some cross sections that turn into the vectors that I'm going to export and import into Aspire to create my toolpaths. It sounds straightforward, but I don't think it's gonna be that simple. Let's find out. I digress, so as not to bore you guys and have the video watch time die off right here, this is the condensed version of what I did in Max to create my blobby shape. I made an initial cross section shape that I like the look of. I figured out the spacing for the number of seats and copied those lines to the locations as guides. I added a few modifiers that turned the base lines into actual geometry. This was a super fun step because I got to see in 3D what the actual shape of the couch would look like. I added the threaded rods that I thought it would need in the model. When I added the threaded rods, I did that to ensure that all the holes would line up when I create the vectors. And then I tweaked, tweaked, and tweaked, and tweaked the verts and the lines until I was happy with the freaky deaky couch that I had made. Then I sliced and diced. This is another element within Max that allows me to create cross sections through my geometry in the scene, AKA the vectors I'll need to cut out the profiles for each piece of the couch. I quickly experimented with some other slicer scripts, but found they didn't work all that great. If you've designed a parametric project before, what software did you use to model and slice it up? I want to know so I can level up my game. I tried to get chat to write me a script to automatically select each line and create a number based on the object's name, but after wasting far too much time, I decided to just number them manually. After that fail, I actually succeeded in using chat to write a script to select and move each line over so when I exported and imported into Aspire, they weren't all stacked up on top of each other. I would have had to move them manually and that would have been a pain in the butt. In Aspire, it was actually really simple. I used the nesting tool to lay out all the pieces. It did all the heavy lifting based on what I told it and the parameters. I could have used nesting for the donuts as well, but it was just as easy to create one, array them, and then use those arrayed copies a whole bunch of times. I added some profile tool paths, I added those meaty bits that I talked about earlier, and it was time to go.
originally I was running basically three eighths of an inch per pass. So I was going half depth um, to conserve the bit, to make sure I didn't break any bits and to make sure I wasn't wasting wood. Um, slower obviously is the, 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 the trade off. A little bit longer tool life probably, a little bit longer to cut, but you save your tool versus full depth you could break your bit, you could wear it down faster, but you could not too. So if I go full pass and everything works out, then we save a whole bunch of time. paint booth yeah um, I think it looks like a going on strike roadside camp but it's gonna do the job so <laughs> do what you gotta do I got a lot of pieces that need to move so I stole this guy. Anybody wants to come and do this instead of sitting there chirping me, that would be awesome. It's gotta go my lunch break. If you don't, then keep chirping because it's really helping. Nicely it goes on now though. They're all not gimped up. Oh, I spoke too soon. There you go. Cool. We are tightening up all while well, we're we're getting them roughly put in place so that we can stand this thing up. And then once it's stood up to make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be, we'll finish tightening, we'll finish cutting off the last of these threaded rods, top one please. And then at some point we'll probably buy some cushions because you know, we want to be super comfy, not just comfy. If we can get her done, everybody gets to enjoy this marvelous thing. Oh! Woo! <laughs> Is that a, oh, that's why. Because that's a sinky spot. We haven't tightened it down yet. Not bad, actually. I know everybody wants cushions, but it's pretty comfy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's nice right there. That's, that's nice right there. <laughs> Overall, I'm actually really pleased with how the couch turned out. The finish is great. It's smooth. There are no splinters. We did a great job sanding it and finishing it. The biggest advice I can give you if you're going to tackle some sort of couch or chair is make sure your design is, is comfortable. That's kind of the running joke around the office right now is it's not that the couch itself isn't comfortable, it's that there's just a couple of spots that are maybe, you know, a little skinnier than they should be for your legs. So you don't really fit as nicely. So take some extra time, really tackle the design from a critical standpoint to make sure it's gonna be comfortable. And other than that, I mean, this thing is shockingly comfortable for plywood and some bolts. I'm thrilled couch assembly is done. Some of the things I've learned. One, the design is actually the trickiest part of this. So spend some extra time maybe studying, figuring out all your parameters before you start to design because that's going to come in handy at the end. Two, 
If you're not comfortable designing, that's okay because there's tons of files out there that you can buy. So you don't even have to worry about designing if you don't have that skill set. Three, make sure you have enough space to actually assemble your piece of furniture because we are fortunate, lots of space here, but if you are on you know restricted space, it might be a little bit trickier to assemble somewhere else and move it into where it needs to be. So some of the things to reiterate about the four by eight and how nice it is for quality of life. You can grab a full four by eight sheet of plywood, chuck it on there and it's so easy, so simple, so straightforward. It also again, lends itself to the design side of things where you're not worrying about having to tile something or break material down to work on a smaller surface. You can grab that full sheet, you can design for the full sheet, throw it on there, boom, easy peasy. Point number two that was amazing was the rapids on the four by eight. That thing was humming at like a thousand inches per minute, which is crazy. Um, once you go quick, you don't wanna go back because it's just a waste of time. And in a production environment, speed and time are money. And third, and this one doesn't affect me personally as much, but the people out there who have dealt with large format machines before are gonna appreciate this. It blows my mind. You can order a four by eight and it shows up at your door in a bunch of boxes. No freight, no cranes, no craziness. It seems crazy that we're at a day and age where you can order a four by eight machine that you put together in your own shop, shows up at your door, and you're banging out huge format projects fast as lightning. That is absolutely crazy to me. The couch is done. We wanna hear what you guys think about it. We wanna know if you're going to make your own parametric piece. If you do, make sure you share it to the socials. We wanna know if you're gonna add anything funky to it, like a fold out footrest, or maybe some magazine storage, or maybe a cool armrest. Doesn't matter what you do post to the socials, we wanna see it. I'm pretty thrilled. Hope you guys like this, hope you learned something. Till the next one, we'll see you around CNC. Draw me like one of your French girls, Jack.